John here. Let's look at a mistake I made here. So in that massive epic video on how I did everything, how I decided all these things, it turned out that this distance between these two points is not quite four mils. And therefore, when I got my board back from Oshpark, it did not have a solder mask thread in between here. I mean, I'll live with it. It's no big deal. I can solder it in. But what will happen without that solder mask, these two pins, this copper here, will prevent me from ever getting a nice clean uh, set of, uh, of uh, uh, joints here. It'll be fine, but it will be impossible to get rid of the bridge that will form between these two leads. And every time I look at the board, I'll go, oh, no, there's a solder bridge in there. Oh, I better fix that. And then I'll look into it and I'll waste five minutes of my life relearning again that, oh, wait, that's, a, that's supposed to be there. Uh, if there was a little mask here, then what would happen is when I solder the pin here and here, they, it won't flow between here and cause this visual bridge. The other way out of this would have been to just run a copper track over here instead of in there. And then it would have not done it either. But as it is, uh, it's annoying and it's wrong. So I want to correct this to make sure you all know what happened. If you recall, I cheated a little bit. I'm going to send the board over to Oshpark, and it says that they have a 3 mil expansion and shift setting, which to me means if you make this clearance 3, then it cannot overlap the pin. And they want a 4 mil wide minimum solder mask width. Now, this red line here, I think, is the uh, 6 mil distance from the pad that tells me that that's the, the copper clearance, okay? So, as you can see... Since 6 and 2 should give me this exact size here. If you zoom way in, it, the problem is that this line must dive into this region up here a little bit. The bottom line is this is not an entire 4 mils wide, and therefore they didn't bother to put the mask in there. Now, I'm not going to blame Oshpark, because what they probably do is they come along here, and in some macro script or some such thing, they fire up a copy of KeyKid in their website and export Gerbers and do all their work based on the Gerber export. Well, uh, well, as you recall, I was looking at the 3D thing and using this as my design guideline to say, oh, there's, co there's solder mask in here, so it should be fine. On the one hand, yes, that's true. On the other hand, no, it's not, because the 3D viewer here does not observe and behave the minimum solder mask width when it drew this in here. So this viewer, it leaves a bit to be desired. That's actually probably a legitimate bug in KeyCAD. If it's not already documented, maybe I'll take the time to go in there and write it up. But the bottom line is, if you're looking at it in here like I did, you might be disappointed. So let's instead export the Gerbers and look and see what that thing's all about, right? You can do that by hitting uh, plot in here, like I showed you in a previous video, or you can just hit this little plotter icon. It opens this thingy up here. Um, this is cosmetic, but I usually want to make sure that if I have silk screen over any pads, remove it. Uh, and then I want to put the Gerbers in a local directory for the project, which is specified like this. I talked about that in my Gerber export video. Let's just plot these things up. I'm all green in here. That's all good. Close, bury this thing. Let's open up uh, the Gerber viewer right here. Now we can look at what this thing just exported. By saying open up Gerber files, go into, this is my project directory where it opened it up. What I really want to see is the front copper and the front masks. F copper, F masks. And the rest of them are not interesting to me right now. Let's zoom way in here and have a look see. This is exactly what the board looked like when I got it back from Osh Park. The mask, this is an inverse. So the blue layer is this guy right here, right? The, the mask. The green is the copper. So by clicking this, I brought the mask up on top so I can see it more clearly. If I click then the, gar the copper, it goes the other way. So what I'm looking at is a kind of a negative drawing. So for the, where the mask is concerned, the mask will be everywhere except for the, where there's blue. And I really wanted it to fish through here. It almost makes it, as you can see here. There's a little divot in here. And these little divots are exactly what I got on my board from Oshpark. It looks exactly like this. So... Uh, I should have looked at the Gerber before I sent it over to Osh Park. So I made a boo-boo. And where I made a boo-boo is when I was messing around in here, 
and I was choosing these numbers. And remember, I was using the little caliper, and I was looking at it going, oh, yeah, it looks good. And then I look at it, the 3D viewer, and I thought, oh, it's great. Not. So there's a couple of options. I can cheat more here and make this like 1.8. And if I do that, you just saw all these shrink. And in fact, now when you zoom in, you can see this line has a gap in there. Now, that line is not relevant when it comes to the solder mask, okay? Remember, I believe the red line is the copper clearance uh, settings that I have, which should be set to 6 mils, which should also be in here. If I go into design rules, see the clearance, clearance, hold a hole, class is somewhere in here. Yeah, that's this 6 mils here. If I play around with this just temporarily, let's change it to, to, to 3 mils. What will happen is I think that red line will retract. Yes, it did. All right, so that's what this red line is right now. And now i got to set that back before I screw everything up, move it back to where it was. Okay. Now, I'm just using this as a reference, okay? If I know that that is 6, all right, and I know that this is now whatever I just set it to, 1.8. Now I know for sure that this has got four in here. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's double check what I set that to since I'm on a tangent here. 1.8. Okay. So now I know it's going to fit. But even now, I'm going to go ahead and make the Gerbers again. I'm going to overwrite the previous Gerbers, blah, 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 all the same settings. Hit plot, close, bury the window, open up the Gerber viewer again. Go in here, open up the files, come down here. Hello. There we go. Now you can see that there's a um, a channel in there where I'm definitely going to be able to get uh, my solder mask in there. Now, this doesn't mean that Oshpark is going to be able to do a good job, okay? It, <laughs> I am violating their recommended minimums, okay? I do have this thing for... And I have this thing moved down to 1.8 where they recommend indirectly 3, okay? So I think it'll be okay. And even if they do cover part of the copper here, it's all right. I've actually sent these out to manufacturers with fine pitch parts and set it to zero and let them do it. You know, on occasion, I have actually done that. And I've never had any problems. So... All right, so I just want to let you know this. If you're making a board like this, you end up in a situation that I just got myself into. You might get a little frustrated. Turns out it's not a big deal other than this cosmetic uh, thing based on these choices over here. So that's how you fix this. It will definitely work correctly now. I'll upload this version of the schematic to GitHub with the better mask settings. All right, here it is. I just hit Control-S to save it, and I'll go ahead and push this up if you want a newer version. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I shall strive to do better in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.